Comic Coalition here for another video for you guys today. And it is a sad, sad day if you are a Collider fan. Um, if you don't know by now, which I'm sure you do, that's why you're watching this video. Um, Collider canceled. Jedi Council. Movie Talk. Collider Live. Collider Heroes. No. You did not hear me wrong. Collider canceled. Collider Live. Movie Talk. Jedi Council and Collider Heroes. Literally the only reasons to ever watch Collider. Um, regardless if you're more of a Star Wars person and you, you, you lean more towards the Jedi Council. Or if you're a comic book person and you're, you're, you're there for Collider Heroes. Or if you like the podcast and you like to hear Collider Live while you're working. Or you like your movie news and you tuned in for Movie Talk. All of those shows are canceled. And Collider is supposed to be moving forward in an exciting new direction. An exciting new direction without any of the shows that we're there to watch. They're moving forward with things like Deep Fakes. Who gives a flying about that stuff? I'm sorry. I saw it. It was funny for a little while. You know, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh man, he really looks and sounds like George Lucas. That's pretty cool. And then after that, that's all there was to it. I never want to see it again. Um, no, no offense to the person, you know, who impersonates. I think you're a great impersonator. I forget your name. Um, <clears throat> but come on, you're going to base your channel now around deep fakes and these other things. This is not why people are subscribed to Collider. I have not seen a single positive reaction or comment to this news because there won't be one no one in their right mind thinks this is a good move and no one in their right mind is going to really want to stay subscribe to collider because why why not only did you cancel all the shows that we've come to love you didn't give them a chance to sign off you didn't give them a chance at one last episode to say goodbye to the people who've been watching them for years and years and years I've been watching Movie Talk for I don't know how long. I've been, you know, with Collider and that crew since the AMC days. I've been here, you know, invested. And even though there was changes and people went on to do their own things like John Campy and Christian Harlop, um, I stayed. I stayed subscribed and I stayed watching the content because that's what I was there for. Now all those shows are canceled and not only were they canceled from what I've gathered, the people involved in those shows, a lot of those people have been let go. A lot of your favorite personalities and my favorite internet personalities who talk movies and things like that have actually lost their jobs. And not only did they lose their jobs, from what I'm hearing, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not an expert, I'm not there, I'm not in the field or on the field, I don't work for Collider, <coughs> but from what I'm hearing, they weren't even really, they didn't, they were kept in the dark about this. They had no idea about this until like an hour before we did. Some found out after we did. Imagine that. A random fat white dude that lives in Georgia across America from you knows that you lost your job before you do because your company <coughs> fails to give you proper notice doesn't know how to handle themselves um i really have been sitting here trying to pick out the positives from this guys but there is no positives not only have we lost all the shows that we've grown to love and really become a daily part of our lives but the people involved in those shows a lot of them have lost their jobs and you know i feel for them i feel for them and the fact that they're why why couldn't there have been proper, you know, notice? And the worst part is, the worst part for me is that a lot of the, the Collider personalities that we love are still defending Mark Fernandez. They're still, you know, they're being, they're being really polite. They're being really polite and they're grace, they're, you know, bowing out gracefully. And honestly, it's not the time for that. In my opinion, the way that this happened, I don't think this is right. And if you're not gonna call, you know, for some type of justice, but I mean, 
I'm not in their shoes. I don't know exactly what was going on. All I hear is the rumblings that make their way down to me. And it's not, not a lot of good things. And honestly, I just think it was handled very, it was handled very badly. And I, I, like I said, I feel for them. And I feel like there's still a moment of shock right now. It just happened. Um, and sometimes you know, in situations like this, when you let go from your job, the best thing to do is be polite and be an adult about it, you know, and not say too much, you know, cause you don't want to risk future opportunities and things like that. So I, I want you guys, the, I'm, I'm having to understand this myself. And as you can see, I'm coming to more of an understanding while filming this, that of course, you know, sometimes it's not the best move to go all out and speak your mind because sometimes you could burn bridges and different things like that but i have no connections with collider or anything like that so i can say that i think it's pretty shitty everything that's going on you know i can say that they right now are in a probably in a tough position where i'm pretty sure a lot of them can't speak out how they want to and i believe in the future in the coming months years days weeks more will come out about this more will come out about this because um like, this don't just happen overnight you know and that's kind of how how it was treated from from what i gathered that this basically happened overnight of course mark fernandez collider frosty and whoever these people are who run collider had to have known had to have known for months and neglected to let the people know who were about to lose their jobs you know, and things like that don't happen overnight, even though cause the way Collider is spinning it is that, oh, this basically happened overnight. Now we have no choice but to do this. No, this that that doesn't happen overnight. And like I said, within the coming days, weeks, months, years, you're going to hear more about this. And I believe some of the people who lost their jobs and different things like that will come out about it. Um, But who knows? Who knows? Maybe they won't. But I know for sure that this has to leave a bad taste in their mouth and definitely left a bad taste in my mouth as a fan. And from what I see, it's pretty all around the board that every, it's a unanimous decision that no one's happy about this. So if you're doing this for the betterment of your Collider YouTube channel and you see that literally 100%, not 99.9, .9, cause I've sat on the internet and I've looked no, that doesn't make me an expert, but when you get on Twitter and you get on Instagram, you get on these Facebook groups, you get on YouTube, you get on all these forms of social media, and you read the comment sections. The comment sections can be pretty toxic, but it will give you a good, pretty good idea of where your fan base is at and how they feel about certain things. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. But right here, when it comes to this situation, I have never in my life of, of being on social media have I seen so many people agree about this, that this is a stupid move, and that they no longer want to be subscribed to Collider. Um, and I don't blame them. I unsubscribed right before I started making this video. Also unfollowed them on Instagram as well. Um, just doing whatever part I can to show them a big fuck you for basically getting rid of all of the things that we grew up liking. Um, I say grew up because a lot of us fans have been watching these these personalities and these shows for years we've grown with them as people you're never done growing up i don't care if you're 45 50 years old by the time you're you're you know a few years older you're a different person we live we learn we grow and we have lived learned and grown with these personalities and with these shows and um i know some people may watch it might not think it's a big a big deal but these shows help a lot of people get through their day-to-day -day. um a lot of people listen to them on podcasts while they're at work or just to take their minds off of things i mean life is hard life is hard and i think we all can agree on that regardless of where you're from how much money you got in your pocket right now life is pretty fucking hard and throws a lot of um curveballs at you and a lot of times it's good for people to have something that that takes their mind off of things and for me movies have always been something that takes my mind off of things but you can only watch but so many movies um i've been connected with these personalities through the years i I'm, they're part of my day-to-day -day life as i'm sure they're part of a lot of your day-to-day -day lives literally every day i'm watching something on collider like hours and hours of my time every day go, goes to collider 
And when you see something like this happen, and not only something like this happen, but the way it was handled, you have the right to be pretty outraged about it because, I mean, this is just this tomfoolery at its finest. Make the argument that this was the best thing for Collider to do, you know, from a business standpoint. And I'm not going to lie, if you look at the numbers, their numbers have been dwindling. But one thing that I've learned about when it comes to YouTube, I'm not a big YouTuber at all, of course, but numbers are pretty trendy. Numbers are pretty trendy. Sometimes you're going to have a decline in numbers. Sometimes you're going to have an increase in numbers. It all depends on what's going on in the world at the time. What's going on in entertainment news. You know, like I said, numbers are pretty trendy. But when you have something like Movie Talk or Jedi Council, those are like your anchors. Sure, they may dip in views from time to time. But those are the backbones of your channel. That's what's really got your fan base there. That's why people are really subscribed. When it comes to things like the deep fakes, yeah, sure, you might get a one-time view. Someone might see it and want to share it with their friends real quick. But you're not going to get subscribers. You're not going to get a loyal fan base from your deep fakes. You're going to get a one-time view. Oh, that looks cool. And then never going to worry about your channel or your content again. Whereas when you have things like Movie Talk and you have things like Jedi Council, every Thursday there's thousands of people there to watch that. You know, every day there's thousands of people here to watch Movie Talk. Now, while the numbers might be not be as impressive as you want them to be, partially because of you, because it is your fault. How, when you when Mark Fernandez came in and bought Collider, he started. You could tell there's definitely a shift in the way things were going. And when I started seeing him come on camera and be on Rule of Two, I kind of got Diddy vibes. You know, you don't want your producer all in your videos, all dancing behind you in your videos, and all on the track screaming. You know? But yeah. For one, the numbers started going downhill when you started re taking out the personalities that, personalities that everybody grew to love and started putting in fresh new faces. i am be honest. Yeah, I like some of the fresh new faces that have um, been introduced on Collider within the past couple years, but most of them ain't doing it for me. And most of them ain't doing it for you. And you can say what you want, but if they were, then the numbers on Movie Talk would be higher. I'm pretty sure when John Campio was on Movie Talk, when Schnepp was on Movie Talk, Christian Harloff was on Movie Talk. When Ellis was on Movie Talk, pretty sure the numbers were a lot higher than when you have Collider Frosty sitting next to Tom, Dick, and Jane and Perry Nimroff. Perry Nimroff, however, is a Collider staple, and I think everyone who's a fan of Collider loves Perry Nimroff. <clears throat> and I think she's been doing a great job with Movie Talk. The only problem that I've had with Movie Talk later lately is the one or two guests that you see and you're like who the hell are these people because face it we're we're not watching collider for the news yeah we love movies yeah we love movie news yeah we love hearing your thoughts on these movies but why what really brings us back to collider it's the personalities and collider had like at one point it was just a stable full of like i i would i would chalk it up to like the WWE Attitude Era when there was just so many heavy hitters, so many pundits, movie pundits and different people on there that you just loved. And I think the Schmodown has done a good job of taking those Collider um, personalities and giving them a, a different outlet for their fans to watch as well. But that's what brought us back to Collider over and over and over and day to day was the personalities. We like to click on Movie Talk because we see some of our favorite people that we, you know, talk about this stuff. People that who we've grown to like and enjoy. And lately, there's been a lot of fresh new faces and a lot of different rotations going on. And you can't really get set in with your group of people. There's a reason why I think Screen Junkies is still doing okay when it comes to a lot of their news. Um, because 
they have a core group of guys at that table and that's who you click on that channel for every day um mark fernandez and the good folks failed to realize that and that's why the numbers started going down on their shows and that's why it ultimately led to them being canceled so when it comes to oh as a business move it was a smart business move they weren't doing the numbers you know you know you can't keep doing this doing that the numbers were dropping because of the changes you made hey maybe before canceling the show you try to fix the things that you fucked up and maybe more people will watch it's not like we haven't been vocal about what we don't like on the channel we've let them know you know and i mean everybody saw it coming a lot of us saw it coming it's been going downhill and for those reasons so when you say from a business standpoint it was a smart thing to do i mean i have some arguments that i can make there because from a business standpoint why would you cancel the only shows that that are keeping these subscribers sure deep fakes got 800,000 views and did well for you well guess what the reason why you got all those clicks is because it was on the collider channel with a bunch of subscribers who are already there to watch movie talk if all these subscribers leave from collider live and movie talk and because of jedi council and heroes they're not going to be there to watch your stupid deep fakes they're not like i said numbers are trendy um a lot of the accounts i hear john campy has said it himself the good folks over at collider um seem like they're fascinated with trends and with celebrities and i don't know about you but the number one thing i don't watch when it comes to movie news and stuff is celebrity interviews because i really don't care for them that much honestly um and like i said like deep fake is a trendy thing going on right now I'm sure it's going to get you clicks right now and it's you're going to live it up and you're going to be happy you're getting all these views but you're going to lose your core fan base without a core fan base trust me you have nothing you have nothing but trends when that trends over that trends over and don't come crawling back wanting all your fans back who left because you decided to destroy the very thing that made your channel um so the title of this video is is this the end of collider is this the end of collider the answer to that question is pretty simple the answer to that question is that it's up to us it's up to me it's up to you guys anybody who clicked on this video it's up to you to decide if Collider is over. In my eyes, Collider is over. I unsubscribed. I will not click on another Collider video until something's done and they bring back these shows. If they don't bring back these shows, I will never subscribe back to Collider and I will not click on none of the deep fake videos or none of the bogus bullshit that they're putting out. Period. I know they still have people over there that I like working for them and I wish them the utmost success, but I'm not going to support the bullshit videos that you're putting out once you've canceled these shows i'm sorry so like i said is this the end of collider it's up to us fans and if we're going to continue to support the things they put out if we're going to support the fact that they basically laid off a lot of the personalities who we've grown to love over the past few years they basically laid them off and gave them about a two hours notice before letting us know letting the general public know what was happening didn't give them a send-off, didn't give them the last episode, basically kicked them out the door and say we're moving on to bigger, better things. Exciting new things. Nah. So like I said, is Collider over? Is this the end of Collider? You decide. What will you do? Will you can support, continue to support that? Or will you be like me and unsubscribe? I have no advice for you but to follow your heart. If you like the content that they're going to continue making, then by all means, continue to support it. But if you're like me, and you feel like this is a total smack into the in your face then you know what to do but as always hit that like button hell if you hated this video and you hated everything i had to say hit that dislike button be sure to subscribe and as always you have a good day youtube